All right, so today we got to buy one, get one. That's right. You're about to see two different creeps completely destroy their own lives in front of Chris Hansen and just get wrecked by him and his crew on TCAP. And this one is insane because the first guy is literally an employee of Nickelodeon. Yes, the children's TV network. So if that isn't terrifying, I don't know what is, but make sure you stay until the very end because both these dudes have hilarious reactions. They're absolutely terrified and you're just going to want to enjoy this with me. Before we get into that, though, make sure you drop a like if you want to support my content as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. And besides all that, let's Let's get right on into it. Back at the house, our female decoy is about to say hello to 27-year-old Justin Smith, a video post-production editor who does freelance work for Nickelodeon. Yes, you heard that correctly. This freaking guy works for Nickelodeon. Now, it doesn't sound like he has a very, you know, uh, talent-facing role. <laughs> at least he's not out here, you know, being like the wardrobe specialist for these actors that are on these shows or something. No, he's an editor. It's still really creepy, but that at least gives me some hope that this guy really did not allow this to cross over into his work life as much as possible. Still weird to think of him literally sitting in some dark room somewhere, though, just looking through hours of footage for these kids' shows, like, as his job. But we won't get into all that. Let's just see how this dude reacts to getting absolutely destroyed by our boy Chris Hansen. And what makes this guy absolutely beautiful is he is one of those dudes that spells it out in the chat logs for the courtroom exactly why he knows this was wrong and why he still went and, you know, met up with the decoy anyways. I feel like if a judge sees this stuff, there's just no way you can't convict this guy, you know what I mean? The other hilarious thing is this dude is absolutely terrible at spelling, so he, he actually says at one point in this chat log, it's definitely bad, I think you're this cute, lol. And the decoy says, how come? And he literally says, quasi I'm 27. Like, damn, dude, this guy honestly didn't even even seem that old to me looks wise but i guess it makes sense maybe that's just because he looks kind of dweeby but yeah thank you for confirming to us that you know that this is inappropriate for you to be doing i'm sure it makes all the prosecutors jobs that much easier and i know digital footprint wasn't really that big of a concept back then maybe that wasn't even coined as a term yet in the you know mid 2000s when this was made but you gotta understand that when you say stuff online it's accessible mostly forever especially if somebody downloads it just like this chat log so i don't know how this dude was saying this stuff or any of these guys say these things and don't expect to get caught up in something as a result. Oh, and if that wasn't worse enough, this dude sends over just a full photo album of himself. I'm sure you can properly deduce what kind of, you know, angles this man was taking for these photos and, you know, what his wardrobe was for this photo shoot. It seems he was only wearing a suit that he got on his birthday in these shots, uh, so sadly I can't show them to you. He also sends a bunch of links to just different types of videos. Who knows why? Maybe he has examples to say, oh, yeah, we should try this one and then let's do this one. Either way, this dude really, really solidified that he is just you know, in this for real, and he is not one of these, oh, it's my first time, I've never done this before, I didn't, I didn't think I should do it type of guys. No, this is a monster. I mean, all these dudes are monsters, but he is a monster to a degree above many of the others we've seen on this show, just with the aggression that he has in this chat log. And now, here he is, walking into the house. Hey, come on in. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Awesome. Good. So dude's walking in right now and he is feeling good. Honestly, he was kind of being sketch out in front. I think he thought the wrong door was the one he was supposed to go into. Honestly, the house just for this one, it's god awful, the layout of it. I mean, it just adds some extra difficulty trying to get these guys to enter the house when there's like three front doors. But besides all that, he's feeling good. So I'm ready to see this man's entire world get shifted upside down. Chris, I'm gonna need you to make this reveal extra special for me, especially because this guy's job is just so creepy when you have this context of what he's doing outside of the job. Yeah, we gotta destroy this dude, please. And we have a hot dog. Oh, my God. Sorry, Ben. That'd be good. It took me like 21 minutes to get down here because there was so much traffic. Are you serious? Where do you live? North Hollywood. This dude's really complaining. Do you not realize what kind of peers you have on this show, man? 21 minutes to drive over here is literally a walk into the park. I've seen some dudes on this show literally say they took six hours to drive across multiple state lines to visit this decoy. And he's complaining just because he had traffic. Dude, you live outside of Hollywood. LA is traffic, dude. That is your existence. But besides that, he's feeling great. He just found out there's a hot tub here. So in his mind, I'm sure he's going through all these different scenarios and all of them could not be further from his actual future scenario that he's He's about to find himself in here in about 20 seconds. North Hollywood. Oh, that's not bad. We had a lot to talk about, you and I. Why don't you just have a seat right there, please? 
seriously. So that's right. This freaking moron doesn't even stay, and he doesn't have the gumption, if that's the word, to speak to our man Chris Hansen. He is that terrified as Chris comes out aggressively, saying we have a lot to talk about. That also is like the most jigsaw sounding intro that we have seen from Chris Hansen. God, that would have been a crazy spinoff. I mean, Saw was like such a massive franchise during this time. You're telling me they couldn't have had a spinoff where Chris Hansen or somebody like him, you know, goes rogue from the TV network and starts. Oh, dude, I could think of the plot right now. He just becomes Jigsaw himself. Yo, that is some gold. MSNBC or whoever produced those damn Saw movies, get on that, please. Anyways, enough fantasizing about random movies. I don't know why my brain does this, but this dude's ready to bolt out. So let's see if he uh, actually does decide to stay. I'm guessing he doesn't because usually these guys that dip just realize instantly who Chris Hansen is and they know it's probably better if I just take the arrest instead of trying to face this conversation that is probably on average the worst conversation these guys are going to have in their lifetimes. Okay. Now, you keep, no, I need you. No, seriously. I have to go. You're going to want to talk to me. I'm sorry. Trust me on this. Now, you work at Nickelodeon, huh? No. You don't. What's your name? And this dude is almost sprinting out. I mean, he's looking like Hal in Malcolm in the Middle when he was learning to speed walk. Like, he could not leave this place faster, and I'm sure it's scaring him even more as he's leaving. Chris Hansen is like, hey, now you work at Nickelodeon. Like, I just know his heart rate spiked during that, and that is beautiful to know. Because, yeah, when he realizes these people have been researching him and know his background and what he does for a living, he's probably just going through his head all the repercussions of this one action. Well, multiple actions, I should say, that actually led to him being here. But he's realizing his career's gone, his family's gone. Pretty much everything he's worked for is gone. That's gotta be a hard reality to face, but also I don't feel bad for this scumbag, so that's fine. I really wasn't to do I swear to God. And this dude gets arrested on the front sidewalk and instantly starts breaking down into the most wimpy sounding tears. I wasn't gonna do anything. Even though I was super excited before Chris showed up, I wasn't gonna do anything, I swear. I only drove 21 minutes to hang out. Like, boo-hoo, cry me a river. In fact, this dude actually does because he continues crying the entire interrogation afterwards. They don't have many clips of it, but yeah, he's pretty emotional this entire way. And like I said, it's probably because he realizes he had a very cool job. I would love to have worked as a TV editor for a major network back in the day. That's like the coolest editing job you could do before YouTube. Even with YouTube now, that would have been a crazy job. So yeah, he's an idiot for throwing that all away. And I'm sure he has other things in his life that were going well that are all just going to be going terribly. Or if it's people in his life that he loved, they're probably not going to remain in contact with him after this, rightfully so. He knew coming in that what he was doing was wrong. That's why when he realized that he was caught and the ramifications on his life and everyone around him, that in my mind is why he became so emotional. He pleaded no contest to two counts. Now it's time to move on to the next guy. This is a two pack. That's right. I said so in the intro. Let's see what's the deal with this dude. It's at the same house. Let's rock. His name is Maddie. This is Matthew Nash, a 36-year-old musician, screen name Sugar Davis. Oh, we got Sugar Davis. Hey, that's one of the cleaner usernames in here. You know this dude just thinks he's so suave. I don't know why he can't use that suaveness, if that's the word, to pick up chicks his own age. But no, instead he's here in the middle of this, you know, weekday night, trolling this neighborhood, trying to do an unspeakable act, and nobody even realizes it. That's kind of crazy to think about. Well, actually, I'm sure the neighbors know. They got to hear the commotion, and I'm sure the show itself even goes around to neighbors, letting them know that this sting operation will be taking place. But that's actually a great detail. If anybody knows the behind the scenes of how they do that, let me know. Sorry, I'm going on a tangent again. Let's watch this dude go inside the house and get destroyed. He drove about an hour to get here. How you doing? Not bad. Clinton, are you excited? Hey, I'm excited. Yay. So this dude drove an hour to be here, and his goal is to just, you know, hang out in the hot tub, chief some za, and uh, enjoy each other's company, including some, you know, stuff going on with baby oil. I don't know. This man just has a whole night planned for himself in this decoy that he doesn't even understand is not going to go his way at all. Instead, you're in Chris's fantasy now. <laughs> Did you bring any? Mm -hmm. No? No. Why? So you didn't bring your drums, or? No. Why don't you have a seat right over there? No. I need to talk to you for a minute. <laughs> so I think I know why these two were paired together. They both have the same exact reaction. It's almost like Chris Hansen here is a complete jump scare. Bro actually says no and shudders away like he just saw some atrocity unfold in front of his eyes. Nope, it was just you meeting your own demise that you set up for yourself, might I remind you. But yeah, it looks like we got another runner. But let's see. I need to talk to you for a minute. Uh -uh. Outside, the Long Beach police are waiting. At the processing center, investigators find... 
balloons. It's baby oil. So that's right. This dude gets swiftly arrested and he has the whole kit on him. Like I said, he brought that baby oil. He's got some balloons. This dude brought a kit of fun. At least in his eyes, what he sees is fun. And he doesn't get to use a single one of these items. He also completely, completely just cowered in fear in front of Chris Hansen there. I love these shots where you just see the absolute power this man has. And I really appreciate how a freaking aggressive he was on both of these reveals. I think that's partly why they both ran. It's usually, I know he pops out and says something witty, but it just felt so swift in this one. Like, that is beautiful. And he tells the police he's married. How long have you been married? Uh, 13 years. Ever been caught doing this before? No. And that's right. This dude has been married for a decade and a half. I, I don't even know, dude. Like, it's just crazy to think of the fallout for everybody else involved in this dude's family. And that is the aspect of this show that is so heartbreaking to think about. And just the people that I truly feel bad for. Is she aware of this? type of behavior? Yes. He also tells police he and his wife have been to counseling because he's met others online. And apparently this was such a problem with this dude. I don't know if it was always this age range. I think it was just in general. He was meeting up with people online, but it became such an issue that he actually has been going to counseling and therapy for this with his wife. And clearly that has just not been working. So uh, I really dread the idea of this wife getting that phone call and knowing just the true damage that her husband has done here uh, to both their lives. It's, it's really heartbreaking. Those are the people I really feel sorry for. They had no idea, and now because of the actions of this one person, you know, they're affecting all these other people who they're supposed to love and care for. And it sounds like the sergeant agrees. I don't know why I had to get all real there and just get all meta about the show, but I really do think of that angle quite a bit when it comes to these dudes who seem like they're kind of normal, productive members of society outside of this, yet they have this deep, deep, disgusting, monster-like nature residing within their souls, and they, uh, they destroy their lives and their loved ones' lives by showing up to this house. So let me know what you thought of this down in the comments below. Hopefully you enjoyed this two-pack. I just figured, you know, they're good together because they were both kind of short cases, but it was so hilarious seeing these dudes get scared out of their own pants when Chris Hansen revealed himself here. An absolute treat to the eyes, and I hope you agree. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, and any of you that watched to the very end, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss another upload. Got plenty of content coming for y'all this month, and I think that about does it, so I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until next time, peace out.